Welcome back everyone, Komakali here. This is Elite Dangerous. This video is part three of my tutorial series and in this video I'm actually going to show you flying to another space station. So we're going to undock from a space station, we're going to um, select another space station in the same solar system, we're going to fly to this space station and we're going to dock at it. Um, the space station name is, I think it's a Coriolis station. And a lot of people have had difficulty figuring out where the um, loading or the, the slot is for the landing pads. So let's go ahead and return to the surface because this will take a few minutes, a few moments, not minutes. And while we're doing this, let's go ahead and pull up our navigation menu. Now what we want to do is we want to find a space station that we want to fly to. So let's try to find one that's close. This is an outpost. Outposts, they have landing pads on the outside and you can normally have a small and medium landing pads but there aren't any large landing pads. If you want a large landing pad you'll usually have to go to one of these big space stations. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fly to Yapping Enterprise. And so hit the space bar, we'll lock our destination. And as you'll see right there, it looks like a sphere, sort of, with several flattened edges. And as you see, those are my landing lights. Um, and you'll, you'll see that there's a little slot on the front of it. This is, you have to find that slot because all the landing pads are actually inside the station. And that's where people struggle is because the space station is so big and it rotates all the time. So you have to figure out where that slot is so you can fly in. And um, when I first started playing this game, I had trouble finding them. I had trouble landing in the 10 minutes that you're allotted. But let's go ahead and launch. Um, remember that we have our vertical thrust on R and F. R flies up, F flies down. And I'm just going to lift straight off the pad using R. And we'll go ahead and retract our landing gear. Don't need our lights anymore. And let's start applying some forward thrust. And now to the left of our sensors, you'll see a little circle with a blue dot in it. This is this shows you the orientation of where you're facing versus your target. And so because my target is a space station, I'll know that that's where the space station is. When it's a hollow circle like this, it means it is behind you. And so with it right in the center like that, it means it is directly behind me and I am literally flying the opposite direction from it. So let's go ahead and rotate all the way around. And you'll see that we now have a marker on the map. Um, looking down on the right hand corner you'll see that we are no longer mass locked so let's go ahead and jump to super cruise. What I'm going to do for that is press shift and J. Frame shift drive charging. Unfortunately I forgot about that aspect of steam. Now you can throttle up or you can just hit your boost which is tab. Now we're in super cruise mode. And again, you do have the little special area of your uh, throttle, the blue area. You want to try to keep it in there. Some tips and tricks. Um, these systems, these uh, space stations, they always orbit a planet. Well, I say always. I could be wrong, but it's like 95% of the time they orbit a planet. And the slot that you have to fly into is almost always facing the planet that it's orbiting. And so if you drop out of Super Cruise on the planet side of this space station, you'll be facing the entrance right away. Normally people will fly towards the station and they'll drop out right behind it. Uh oh. You'll see there, time to target is 
was seven seconds. You want to try to keep it right around seven seconds. If you get lower than seven seconds, you're actually going to overshoot your target. So you see I'm at six right now, so I'm going to slow down a little bit. I'm going to rotate my ship and pan to the right. And this will allow me to circle down alongside the planet. Alright, so six seconds. Let's slow down again. And so from judging from this orbital ring, we can see that we've got the planet right here and we've got the space station over here on the other side of the planet. So I'm actually going to fly across the planet into the gravity well and then I'll approach the station from the planet side. Let's go ahead and speed up again a little bit. And we should be entering into the gravity well of the actual planet and it's going to slow us down. The yellow bar boundary, this little one right there, that is when you're too close to the planet and you'll actually be forced to uh, drop out of Super Cruise or else you'll risk running into the planet. Now because I've got this in the blue area, my ship is constantly slowing down and I entered into the gravity well too soon. And so it's slowing me down too fast. Um, the plus side to this is I'm probably not going to overshoot the space station. But we are approximately 30 seconds out. And we'll just kind of try to keep this little dot fairly centered on it. Oh, 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 we're dropping. We're getting a little close, so I'm, so I'm going to keep on. Okay, now we can disengage, so press J to drop out of Super Cruise. And what do you know? We're not actually facing the slot, but you might be able to see it. Right down over there, you can see some little antenna sticking out of the plant or out of the space station. Let's go ahead and bring everything to a full stop. Full stop. So if you look over here, you'll see a little, some antenna sticking out of the station. These are where the landing slot is, the envelope slot that you need to fly through. You also notice that the, the uh, space station is rotating. The axis that it rotates around is going to be where the loading slot is as well. And so if you look to see what direction the entire station is rotating, you can usually figure out which side the slot is on. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to press and hold F. And while we're holding down F, let's go ahead and talk to the station and ask for docking permission. Docking request granted. Let's get some forward momentum going. Boost failed because it's not regenerating fast enough. And now you'll need to match the rotation of the actual thing. And so this is a transport ship. I just hit T to target it. Let's go back and target the space station. I'm going to continue holding down F to force the ship down. I don't know if you can see. I can see because I know what I'm looking for. There's little green lights there and little red lights over there. You, when flying into a space station, you want to enter on the green light side. And when exiting, you want to exit on the green light side. So on the inside, the green is over here and the red is over here on the inside. But we want to fly in where the green lights are. And looking down really quick, we are destined for landing pad 12. So you see the red lights on the right. If you try to fly in and you don't have permission, you can get shot. 12 is over here on the right. So let's go ahead and drop our landing gear. You don't want to loiter in these... Um, the blue area, if you take too long flying through there, it's a penalty and you can be fined for it. Be 
Engines disengaged. Um, it takes a little bit of practice for that. Uh, and I can actually uh, fly in pretty quick at almost full thrust and do some of these landings. Uh, I didn't want to try it now because I'd probably crash because <laughs> I haven't done it in so long. But uh, a lot of practice with landing. Um, you'll know that you just kind of aim down at the ramp and right before you hit, pull up and then just tap F lightly to lower yourself down. And as long as some, you get close enough, you'll land. Uh, if you touch down too soon, uh, you can actually scrape your ship and scratch your paint. If your shields are active, you're, you'll be lucky and you'll probably just scratch the paint. If your shields are off, you can blow up your ship, which is not cool. Anyway, so that's the basics of how to dock. If we take a quick look at the starport services, you'll see that this place actually has more than where we were. We actually have a shipyard here. And should you have enough money, you can actually buy different ships. So we've got an Eagle right here. The cost for that is 44,800 credits. The Eagle is a very good second ship if you're doing bounty hunting. And later on, I will be doing a tutorial on building an Eagle for about 140k. Sounds like a lot, but with a Sidewinder, you can make that in like an hour, maybe less. Um, and so I'll show you how to build an Eagle that's pretty well equipped. Uh, let's see what other things do we have. A hauler, this is a good ship if you want to start trading. Um, normally people will do some basic trading with the Sidewinder and then upgrade to the hauler. It has a slightly better cargo capacity. One of the really cool things about the hauler is it can also be used as an exploration ship. And if you outfit it correctly, it can travel very, 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 very far um, on a single tank of fuel. And one of the other ships that uh, can do really well against it is the Asp Explorer. The Adder is sort of like the Hauler, but it's a uh, sort of like a step up from the Hauler. I don't know if it's so good for actually car carrying stuff, but you can use it for um, combat. It has some extra hard points. So hard points are where you mount weapons, so it has two small hard points and one medium. Whereas the hauler has one small hard point. So the hauler is not very good as a combat vehicle, but the adder can be. So if you're going to do bounty hunting, you'll probably want to go from the uh, up to the eagle, from the sidewinder up to the eagle. And if you want to, an adder. But personally, I skipped over an adder and I went... Um, well, I didn't go to the Cobra because the Cobra is so expensive. It's almost 400k. I went to the... Goodness, where is it? I guess they don't sell them here. Um, I went to the Viper after the Eagle. And then after the Viper, I went to the Vulture. And the Vulture is a freaking amazing ship. It's got two large hard points right here you can see these little little ramps right here just massive massive guns that come out of there and it's amazing to watch and these ships just tear things apart so easily it's very impressive but you need a significant amount of money to outfit one of these so don't be fooled when you see a cost and you're like oh four million or five million that's not that big of a deal that just buys a ship and a very basic armament. You're going to need several million credits on top of that to load it out. My adder, fully kid, or my um, vulture, fully kitted, was somewhere in the neighborhood of um, 60 million, I think, overall. Uh, the eagle, when I have that fully kitted, is right around 160k maybe a little bit more like 200 but 140k gets you a, a really decent build that's really good for bounty hunting 
then let's say that you were to move up to the Cobra Mark III to get a good outfitting for this that's really good at bounty hunting, uh, you're looking at a cost of like three to four million to get the ship going. And it, it's just, the, the cost escalates so fast. Uh, the Cobra Mark III is the, sort of the, um, goodness, I'm not sure what to call it. The mascot of the Elite game series. The Elite, the very first Elite game released in like 1984, I want to say. And the Cobra Mark III was the ship that you were flying in that game. Or I don't know if it was Mark III, but it was a Cobra. And it's a pretty slick ship. Uh, I like it. Uh, and a lot of people will fly it as their main combat ship. But I actually like some of the smaller ships. This is, I think it's a medium ship. But it can be used for everything from bounty hunting to exploring to hauling goods. And it does well, equally well, in all of these tasks. It's a jack of all trades and master of none. Anyway, so that's a quick rundown. Uh, this is the shipyard. Uh, munitions, this is where you buy if you have like uh, multi-cannons or other guns that use ammunition. This is where you restock your ammunition. Uh, commodities market, this is where you can actually do your trading. Um, this place is selling chemicals, explosives, but they're not buying it. And then you can see the demand is rather high. They want uh, almost 2 million units of it. Galactic average is 378. So if you can find some for around 378 and bring it back here and sell it for 458, you can actually make a pretty decent wage. Um, and so that's what trading is all about: is finding good trade routes where you can actually earn some currency, uh, trading different goods. And so as we continue looking at this, you'll see some other things. You, you want to go for things that have really high demand. If it doesn't have high enough demand, then you're not going to be getting as good of a rate. Let's see what else there is. Okay, so see, this place is selling cobalt for 642. Oh, no, no. If you sell cobalt to them, you'll get 642 for it. You buy cobalt from them for 675. Yeah, I, th I think I said that reversed earlier. And you can always look at the Galactic Average Fly Around. There are some online tools that will help you figure out where some good places are to get everything. And as opposed to the demand you also have the supply over here so they've got a pretty hefty supply of cobalt it's medium supply and if somebody with a large enough ship came along they could over several trips buy out all this maybe and then it would actually increase demand or the yeah it would increase demand and their supply would go down so yeah that's cool stuff. If you do happen to come across like illegal goods, um, you're not going to be able to sell it in the commodities market. There's another type of thing, and I'll show you on the systems map. Let's go to the system map. Some space stations actually have a black market. And if you're carrying illegal goods on you, come on. If you're carrying illegal goods on you, um, you'll want to go to a facility that has a black market. But though you need to be careful because if there is security forces in that area and they scan your cargo hold and see that you're carrying illegal goods, you could be fined, you could be fired upon. All sorts of different things can happen. Um, you'll immediately get a wanted level. And so one of the common things that people will do is they'll try to fly into a space station as fast as possible to avoid being scanned. Um, this space station has a slot entrance and if you can make it to that slot and through the slot before a ship scans you, you're home free. But you can't enter that slot unless you have docking permission and yeah, uh, there's a lot of different t tri tricks, I can't talk, tips 
and tricks to actually dock while you're carrying illegal goods and I've done a little bit of smuggling not a significant amount and I'll at some point do some tutorial videos on those if you guys are interested anyway uh, that'll be it for now might even be it for today or at least until tonight and I'll do some more videos of actual bounty hunting using the Sidewinder until we earn enough money to actually um, buy better weapons. And so that's where I'm going to leave off this part. Thank you all for watching. Tune to the next part. Hopefully this has been helpful for you. If you're having some other difficulties with some of the flying or some of the other things in this game, let me know and I will make a tutorial on how to do that. If I understand it if I know how to do it. Thank you guys, and I'll see you later.